Thanks. Thanks. Order. The call to order the meeting of the Board of Health on March 22nd. 2017. Uh, first, I'd like to get a little housekeeping done uh, for the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to go over the minutes over the last few meetings? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, January the 18th, we can start with. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's see here. I had something here. Um, page four. It's just a typo. Uh, I just add one thing on the 18th. Yes. Uh, I know in the big picture uh, that 18th, everybody yeah. is an interim chair, but the, uh, the minutes said that I was the uh, elected the interim chair, acting interim chair. Uh, like I said, I guess everyone's an interim chair, but uh, interim usually means uh, that something else is pending, somebody else is pending. So yeah. maybe we could just say I'm the chair. Where, I'm sorry, where are we talking that? that is? Uh, let's see. On the 18th, <laughs> January 18th, Oh yeah, it's it says uh, it's it says Friedman announced that he was stepping down as chairman. It's that paragraph. Yes. After discussion between other board members, Sherlin made a motion to appoint Costigan as acting interim chair. Yeah, that's right. I think it should just be acts as as chair. <coughs> um, and so uh, now let me see if I can find the the. the I think the paragraph above that, two, two above that, starts with housing complaint received on December 28th regarding a vacant property located at 166 Pearl Street. Upon inspection, the Reading Fire Department build, building and health, the property was deemed unsafe. I think maybe upon inspection, Unfit for human habitation and condemned. It just where it's missing a, 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 a verb or, or something like that. Upon inspection by the Reading Fire Department Building and Health, the property was deemed unsafe, unfit for human habitation and condemned. Does that make sense to other people? Is it missing a comma? Mm -hmm. It does. Okay. Um, that's fine. Maybe building and health department or the health division, rather. I don't know, it just seems to be missing some words. But if people understand it, that's fine. Um, so, other than that, I don't have any other comments on the 18th. <clears throat> any motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the 18th. With second. the one correction mm -hmm. about the chair. Any, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor of accepting the minutes of January 18th? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Those are accepted. Uh, the next would be the January 24th minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really see any problems with that one. Yeah, 
Okay. Any, no. Any motion That's to fine. accept. I'll that. make. Um, let me just check one last thing. Sorry for the. wasn't the, there was some, some February reports that were received uh, under what minutes? I'm trying to think. Oh, it was during, okay, never mind. No, that's fine. I'm, I'll make a motion to accept those minutes. Uh, second. Second. All in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, we accept the minutes of January 24th. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the minutes of February 6th. <coughs> the, maybe the hours of February 6th. Yeah. The, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's quite a bit to go through on that. Yeah. Darlene did a great job, I thought. Nice job. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Darlene. That was quite a bit of uh, transcribing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did well. Um, I don't have any comments. I think it was reflects what was, she did a good job of re reflecting what was a lot of material, a lot of feedback. So, um, I'm, I do have a question on the, um, on the reports, um, one of the reports by um, the health agent, and there were some. Let's see. For the, the that yeah. that night, it's it. Is they're the under those minutes, but I don't know if they're considered part of those minutes. You know what I mean? They're like. That in the from, packet from Steve. That's what I'm not. Yeah, that's what I'm not getting here. It says so. There's Donna's report, February 2017 month three report. That was everything was good there. And then health agent update, February 1st to March 1st. Talks about restaurant Pavarotti, Cafe, Cafe, Cafe Nero, Columbia Colombo Pizza. Well, that was just me inquiring to Gene, I think, at the time. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, there was a m met with owner of Chinese restaurant uh, and says unsanitary conditions complaint referral, referral from food inspector. And then there's a bunch of bulleted items. I just didn't really understand that. Do you know? Looks like this. Uh, well, that that is our current. Health. That's what that's we're, we're going to okay. next. Okay. Yes. That's okay. not Sorry. under those minutes. No, no. Got it. That's, that's for tonight. That's still that's on the agenda for tonight. For tonight. Okay, okay. Yes. good. I'm good. So um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the February public hearing and meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, Donnelly, we accept the minutes of February the 6th. Thank you very much. Nice job, Darling. Mm -hmm. uh, next on our agenda, uh, Bob Bracey, our new health agent, our interim health agent. <laughs> uh, Bob, you have a report for us. I know it's been since, I think, what, beginning of January that we've actually had a report from a health agent. Uh, there were some things in here that I wanted to bring up. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would I make a suggestion to, to uh, take this out of order since we have people here? Because mm -hmm. this is going to be pretty lengthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I would make the suggestion that maybe I uh, finish up the meeting with my report. Just a suggestion. Sure. Uh, that would Just make because sense. We, I think we have folks here that. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's we might run the risk of not getting to it, but is, is that. That's okay. No, okay. We need, we'll get to okay. it. We need Just to get a suggestion. Because I've added some, uh, an updated report. Okay, no, that, that makes sense. That makes well, and, and I'd want to go over this methodically with you so that you mm -hmm. can understand what we've done in the short time that we've been here. Okay. Because you might have questions and it might take a little longer. Sure. Uh, okay. Good, that makes sense. Thank you, Bob. 
then next would be our just to continue our discussion on the proposed tobacco regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, these are a continuation of the last public hearing. Uh, we have had uh, lengthy discussions at our at our meetings through the months, uh, at our monthly board meetings to discuss all of this. Uh, we've had a lot of input from <coughs> from the public, we've had discussions amongst ourselves. Uh, we've also had testimony at the public hearing, uh, quite a bit of testimony that was part of the minutes and uh, I think just about everybody has, has had some idea about what, what they wanted to say in that. Uh, we've also had quite a bit of correspondence, written correspondence after the meeting that I would like to get into a little bit uh, as this progresses. Uh, uh, I guess first of all, first of all I, there were some questions uh, at, the, at the public hearing that I think we should probably address. Uh, I know Andy, you said you had, a, you had a list of questions maybe that you wanted to address. And, yeah. I mean, I know there was the, there were, one of the questions or when John, John Halsey brought up questions uh, regarding the, uh, the high school, the Reading High School students' figures on that. Uh, Erica McNamara was good enough to send me some of her figures uh, from the Reading portion of the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, and in the, the high school survey, the 2015 Reading, Reading High School, Reading Memorial High School uh, Youth Risk Behavior Survey, uh, see. The figures as far as having ever used cigarettes among high school students uh, were 18 percent in Reading. Recent cigarette use, which would be the last 30 days of use, would be 10 percent uh, of high school students. Re recent smokeless tobacco would, in Reading would be 7 percent in the last 30 days. Uh, flavored cigar use, or actually total cigar use would be an 11% of students would use. And e-vapors, uh, electronic cigarettes, the uh, percentage would be 24% have used an e-cigarette in the last 30 days, which I thought was pretty significant. Uh, those compare <coughs> fairly well with the, with the nation as a whole in the, on the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Uh, cigarette use along the country is 43% uh, having ever used a cigarette in the country versus only 18 in Reading. Uh, however, the e-vapors, uh, we, we did not get a, uh, a, a countrywide uh, estimate on that e-vapors, but Reading's came to back to 24%. Uh, having used in the last 30 days, having used an e-cigarette. Uh, actually, in the middle school portion of that, 7% of middle school students have used an e-vape in the last month. How many? 7% of, uh, e of middle school students. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as far as cig uh, cigarette use and uh, flavored cigar use in middle school, it was at 3%. 3% of both flavored, uh, flavored cigars and e-vapors, which I thought was pretty, pretty startling. Yeah. Yeah, uh, along those lines, I found this uh, outside the... Um, about a block and a half away from, on Summer Ave, uh, about a block and a half away from uh, the middle school, <coughs> part of the middle school. Cognac. On the, yeah, on the, uh, Cognac. On the sidewalk, where the kid, a lot of kids walk along Summer Ave, home from there. Did you find any beer bottles or any other type of stuff? Just, just that? It's the only thing you found? Just as a, a note, uh, Wakefield, we did one of the, uh, 
at the last meeting, one of the participants did give us a uh, note of Wakefield's survey. It, I don't think it was a youth risk behavior survey, but it was just a survey of, of the Wakefield's ch uh, children, uh, high school students. Uh, and one of the things that came out to me being very noteworthy was that if e-cigarettes and cigars were not flavored, 65% of the, of the students would not use them. And 44% tried e-cigarettes because of the flavor, which again, I, I thought that was pretty noteworthy. Yeah. John, that was a survey of the high school students by the high school students, their youth group, their that was tobacco the youth. youth action group okay. um, did that survey as their project. I see, thank you. Was that? Uh, that was that, last year. That was from last year? And how reliable do you figure that is? I think when the kids ask the other kids, it's very reliable. Hmm. Was there a reason you guys just singled out, just asking the, the students just at Reading High School, but not the other well, private school off of the well, you, you, like the Youth Risk Behavior Survey is a nationwide survey, and this right. is just the Reading portion of it, Reading, Reading so, Memorial High School portion. So they took the Reading Memorial? So the Reading, the Reading, Reading data out of it. They didn't, they didn't have a Reading data, so they all, obviously they included Austin Prep as well? No, no Austin Prep Redding. would have to pay for it themselves. The Reading School Department doesn't pay to administer it to private schools. And Austin Prep kids aren't all from Reading. Okay, is it a big cost for something like that? For kids doing their own survey amongst <coughs> other kids? Or? I'm sure they must have this a program. Is a, it's a federally funded. Uh, the YRBS, survey. the full YRBS, which talks about a lot of different health issues, violence, right. eating, all sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> costs about four to 6,000, yeah. depending on how many kids there are, and it would be something that Austin Prep would have to pay for. Do, have you guys inquired and see if they had a study done themselves, if they're willing to share that information? And not us. So, uh, so uh, just a general. I'm sorry, has who, who done us? Have you con considered Austin Prep students there? Ask them for that if they did a report, if they're willing to share that information. I, I did not contact Austin Prep about that. Is there a sense that high school kids are using smokeless and flavors to to replace and avoid tobacco or that they enjoy the flavors or 24% usage is pretty high? Uh, well, they, uh, they pretty much use it because of the flavors, I believe. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's a very small amount of that use without flavor, use tobacco products that are not flavored. John, um, I just wanted to ask, the, the, what's the purpose of, of uh, what are we, what are we, what's our goal here right now? I mean, we had a, we've been discussing this since July, last July, mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> we've had a couple rounds of the, the um, regulations come out at public open public meetings. We had a public hearing in February. Are we having another public hearing now or? No, I just wanted to give some data. I just wanted to great. give some data from the communications that I have received. Okay. So you're just, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just as far, just as far as the, some of the other correspondence I can just go over quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. Surgeon General's report of influences on youth and exposure. The more exposure there is, there tends to be more smoking involved. Hmm. Uh, just the the reports that numbered from the Mass Association of Health Boards, the American Lung Association. The Northeast Tobacco Free Community Partnership mm -hmm. in Tobacco Free Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I thought the, the comments were rich and deep. There were a lot of varied comments. Mm -hmm. um, I was um, particularly swayed by um, some of the comments of by Marie Busby and some of the other experts on um, the, the 
the targeting of these flavored cigars mm -hmm. towards youth. Um, and I understand that uh, one business was, one retailer was unhappy with the regulations. Um, but that at the end of the day, the, the, the public comments, the, the, the concern for the health of, of our kids and, the, and these <clears throat> flavored products seemingly targeted towards youth. Um, I, I uh, came to the conclusion that the, our regulations are reasonable uh, mm -hmm. per state law uh, and in, in um, consistent with our, our, what we're required to do by the state, which is to protect the public health mm -hmm. and prevent and reduce disease and address disease. So that's that's sort of what I took away from that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, there was one other question regarding the uh, John Halsey brought up a question regarding the violations, running retail violations, mm -hmm. uh, and there were. Maureen uh, supplied me with the the violation list. Oh, here they are. From yep. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. uh, and over the past year, 2016, 2016 there were four violations uh, out of the 18, 18 permit holders. There were four violations. And I had asked uh, Maureen as far as, th they all seem to be in a like fairly concentrated time frame. So my first question was, well, how how many times a year do we do this? How many times a year do we do we run these compliance checks? I mean, if 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 there were four uh, violations and they were done monthly, uh, that wouldn't be seem to be too much of a of a problem. But if they're done once a year and th that once a year there were four com compliance failures, then that would be significant to me. And not to, I don't, not to single anybody out as far as that, but there, but four com, four non-compliances uh, in the one time. I'm just wondering how often would that over the course of a year, uh, as kids would go into it, what what would that mean into into a location to buy? What would that mean? How many compliance checks were there? And yeah. Uh, was there one or two on that? Um, so there were two. Mm. One was called the Cyanar check, which is just cigarettes. And then the second one was what we call OTPs, other tobacco products. So it was either little cigars or chewing tobacco or e cigarettes, depending on the, on the store. So now you have, you have four um, uh, compliance out of two stings, which is, what's it, 18 times two is 36. I don't know what the figures are, but we're up there right with the with the liquor stores. I mean, you know, we make a mistake, we pay we pay the price. We don't intentionally do that. We don't no, that, sell to I, children. Believe it. I, I, I'm sure you don't. I, I'm sure all of the retailers don't. But but it, but it does happen. I know, but it, it it does because kids try to get away with stuff. I mean, if if, if I had every every kid that tried to buy on camera, that I, I mean, I've I've seen fake licenses. I've I've seen it all. Yeah. And believe me, I, I think turn that's why we're quite concerned often. about selling watermelon flavored cigars in town because kids are attracted to them. Well, you know, adults are attracted to flavors too. There's watermelon vodka around. Yeah, How we don't we don't know? regulate uh, alcohol. Yeah, but you know, so we, we can only regulate, regulate flavors. We, we regulate um, tobacco. Well, well, why don't you regulate alcohol? That's a public concern. It's a public health issue. Ask the state about that. It's the state. Oh, well, the state has regulations for, for cigarettes and tobacco too. Mm -hmm. You don't yield to that. You 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 know you overregulate. Actually, the state state law um, does state that we um, state law does state that um, boards of health are uh, supposed to protect the um, public health and welfare, and that they can make reasonable regulations. Yes. Um, uh, in that regard, yeah. And we and I feel that this is reasonable. How, how do you, how, 
how do you feel this is reasonable? How does this protect <coughs> kids? Tell me how. So uh, this is, we had a public hearing. Yes, I and I wasn't invited said. to until after the fact. I, it would have been nice to be, get the letter when you started to draft these mm -hmm. regulations and be part of that process, yeah. which I've never been in the seven years I've been in this town. I've never, and I've even invited you guys to come stop by and say hello. I've, that happened once, mm -hmm. and it happened recently, in seven years. Uh, I, I never got it's an not, invitation from you when I was the chair. Well, you're the chair. You, you and mean, and I, we also, we also communicate um, with the community through the selectmen. And, and we have a selectman liaison, and we uh, give reports to the liaison, and we also post our minutes online. Right. I, I mean, I know like that, that now, so. but I, I really wasn't aware of that. My point is I would have liked to have gotten that invitation letter at the beginning, not at the end when the decision is already made. Uh, I understood that the decision has not yet been made. Well, we are, our decision is made because it's been in the paper, our CASA, to the uh, letter to the editor, it's in your piece today in the paper. So uh, we know where you stand, and I, and I, and I think you're kind of poisoning the, uh, the discussion. Can we vote? And I, yeah, I, do, I did have <laughs> some questions. At the, at the hearing, I did mention that I, we, I would like to have answers from questions from, from the audience at the time. Uh, if it could clarify our decision. Uh, I don't know, is there a, a Dennis Lane in the? Uh, right here. Dennis, okay. Thank you, thank you for coming. You're welcome, thank you for uh, having me. I did notice one of the questions you had uh, that were brought up was as far as laws regarding possession and use of tobacco. Yeah, I mean, the thing that, um, the thing, I've been a retailer for 43 years, and I work for a coalition of responsible retailers, and our goal is certainly to make sure that retailers do not sell to minors. It's the kids who were catching the school bus in front of my store in the 70s are coming in with their kids now, and my worst nightmare is looking at a mom or dad and saying, I sold your kid Marlboro's, I sold your kid a cigar. That's my worst nightmare. So we don't want to sell the kids. We don't intend to sell the kids. It's not good business. People don't buy, don't buy milk, bread in the Boston Globe in stores that sell to kids. But, and the reason I, and thank you for bringing up the, the possession, the use and possession, if there's a 14-year-old sitting on the steps of Reading Town Hall today, a police officer can't do anything about it. A kid can't purchase them, but he can sit on the steps of City Hall and he can smoke them, and no one other than his parents can take them away from them. Well, that would be a legislative law, then, that would have to be made. Well, well I, wait, wait, let me just insert. You made that point at the last board of something meeting, I and I wasn't there. And I think Chief Sagala responded. And what, did, what was his response? It's, it's difficult. It's, you know, basically, I think, and, and, and the future I think Chief well, Sagala's response was that if an officer saw a kid smoking a cigarette or anything other tobacco product on, on downtown, the officer would take the cigarette from the kid, that call wasn't the made parents, while I was in the room. and I, well, um, that that would and, be that and, that would be a would, law for the legislature right. to decide. But, then, but just on. to finish that conversation, but, the officer but, wouldn't have the right to do that. He, that that's what Chief Sagal said. No, but they still wouldn't but, have the legal right to do it. But because there's maybe, because there's no law against it. But if if it is a legislative thing to to create a law, have you? Brought this up to the legislators, like our state, our state rep and our state senator. Have you brought this up to them? We brought it up on Capitol Hill. We worked on Capitol Hill, and, the, and what Capitol Hill does is they do kind of saw what you guys are doing. I'm not being disrespectful. They throw it back and they say this is a cities and towns issue. Well, this I, is a, I, you know, I contacted I contacted Brad Jones. I contacted Jason Lewis, and they had no record. They had no idea of a no one proposing any type of law. We haven't formally for, proposed it, but we've been to many, many hearings on Capitol but, but Hill. That, we have the same is, conversation we're having with you. But it, that, it is just that, that is the way that you would have to go through it, though. But, you can't, but why can't we work together to get that done? Revere has one, and so does not Lynn. Yeah. So towns have do have the, these laws. Uh, well, the Board of Health can't create laws. Why can't we work together? You're creating a law today. Uh, if you vote on it and vote no, that's a law. Where it's the, a regulation. The proposal, the proposal was to create a possession laws. That, that I'm just I'm just asking a question about what have you done about trying to get a law made? 
So why can't we have a possession regulation? Andrew? No, I, 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 can't, I can't criminalize anything. Yeah. No, I'm in That's it. Well, you, I mean, if you can write me a ticket, you can write a minor a ticket. Am I wrong? Well, I'm, no, we're not going to write no, a minor's ticket, so I, I, I don't think we can. I, I, have you contacted our police chief about what that would mean for their force? Well, we, we, I, I was at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. I would think that would go through the Board of Selectmen. And this is the Board but of Health, the, so can we stick to Board of Health yeah, issues at sure. this point? This is that we're able, I mean, many board of health, many boards of health in towns in Massachusetts have passed similar regulations like this. We're sort of in the middle of the pack, I think. Okay. Yeah. There's been a bunch that haven't, mm -hmm. that have yeah, not I, passed, I, so voted against it, yeah. which is what I'd like you people to do, or at least continue the dialogue. No, there's no more yeah, dialogue. There's, there's, yeah. there's, I, all right, Dan, just, I, as, as far as you're concerned, your business. Right. Uh, as, as many of you may know, that I was in, I was a pharmacy manager in Reading, uh, in the Reading uh, right down the street here. In a 2012, I believe, the Board of Health uh, created a regulation that uh, pharmacies could no longer sell tobacco products. Uh, which I, at the time I actually agreed with. I thought that that was a good idea. Uh, but our, the store did close in 2014. Uh, now, I'm not saying that it was because of the, th that tobacco regulation, but I do have some empathy for the business people in town uh, that, that this might affect. Uh, just to, if I may ask, how uh, your inventory levels, how far out, I know as far as being in retail, you try not to keep a lot of inventory. I, I mean, try to run as lean as I can, yes. However, I, I mean, it'll, it'll be an impact on my business big time. You know, we're looking for economic growth in Reading. Not this way. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, this tobacco. Not, 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 not this way. Not I, I, but kids don't get them from me. Over yes, 21 they, Yes, people. they do. They do. And we have the reports to show they do. And that's just four times in one year that we not know about. Not from me. Yeah, there not, in the, not, not on that report. 2016, I passed that. And yes, I have made mistakes. I don't do it. I don't do it on purpose. Everybody right, but makes, it happens. And, and kids in this town are getting these <clears throat> things. I have two kids in the school system. The kids I raised two kids. I'm raising two, three kids, and they're all getting the vapes. They're vaping in the library. They're vaping in the school. They're getting, they're getting them getting online. Them. No, they're not getting them they're online. They're not getting them from my store. You don't know I'm where they're you. getting them, but they're getting them locally. These kids don't drive. They can't drive to other towns. Do they do a survey and ask where they get them from? Well, they're getting you them can, somewhere. You can buy, you can buy them right online and they ship them you to you. It does matter because online. regulating, I'm not. They're local. The they can't, these kids can't drive. I, they, so they're getting they them locally. E commerce. E commerce is where it's happening. You should be focusing on the heroin problem in this town, okay? That's where the focus should be. Okay, okay. so yeah. let's forget tobacco and we'll just go right to opium. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a bigger concern. Let's, can we, can let's, we move, move on? Let's take care of the tobacco and then move to yes. other, to other health problems mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, the, the point is, the kids, this I'm is sorry. over regulation. The kids are not getting them from a high store. They're getting them elsewhere, I promise you. Okay, that. well, we're regulating those guys, too. So. But I, I'd, I'd like to also not worry too much about the how of get, how they get them, but more of the why do they get them. I, I understand. I mean, I understand you, all of the retailers are doing everything they can to prevent, to prevent them from getting their tobacco products. Uh, the, the how... You, we all know, social contacts, whatever. But to, but to the, say the that this regulation is going to make an impact is very short-sighted, I tell well, you. That, that's where my why comes in. I mean, I think the number was three-quarters of high school students of 12 to 17-year-olds will go to a convenience store over the course of a week. All right, that's kid, kids go to these <coughs> convenience stores. Uh, the, the tobacco lobby has got millions in marketing and advertising. Uh, and the, the two together just, when, they, when the kids go in, they, they see the marketing. And There's no marketing in, 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 in store, convenience stores for, for that stuff. Well, if you're in show. Is that true, Marie? 
if your intentions yeah. of taking this away or controlling it, limit it to certain, you know, all the flavors out, and they're going to lose, the business is going to lose a revenue stream. Is there any way that you guys can support them on different revenue streams that they can get? That's not our job. I mean, we're, that's we're, that's, I, that's, I, I, that's, right. that's a business owner's Some risk when you take a, when you take on Where something. That, like, I'm a business owner as well. well. If you take on a risk, and I've done it, and I've lost. Then you—that's part of the risk of being a business owner. I mean, this this is a little bit of what I'm talking about. Is they do get kind of barraged with. I mean, I'm sure this this <coughs> this, is, uh, this is, may not be Dan. I, I'm it's, sure, it, but it's in the parking lot. It's on a pole in the parking lot of the. I forget what the name is right now. I think it's Mutual Gas at 85 Main Street, Ready. Right? How area. is that magnet the kids? It does right well, away. It smokes and flames and guys. Is there a signage that. law on that? Mm. I mean, the, the Surgeon General's report does it does does suggest that peer pressure is paramount to kids smoking cigars and cigarettes. Uh, the, the peer the peer pressure is just it's an immense for the kids. That's that's my why is we we have to get to why are they smoking. I agree peer pressure is a big component of that. I was a kid once myself, you know, and yeah, I tried some stuff here and there, but for the most part, I come from a good family and rose above it, I, I, you know. I was a smoker in, in, in my, my day, I'm not, I don't smoke anymore. I, I, I just think this is misguided because people that are over 20, 21 and over should be able to purchase this stuff where they want. There's no there's no vape stores in Reading. There's vape stores in Wakefield, Woburn. Wo so so they're gonna go there to, to get it. And I hear some convenience store like there's one in Wakefield that was it's gonna change from a convenience store to, to a vape store. Well, that that is their that is their. I don't want to do that. I, I'm a variety store. I should be able to sell a variety of products to the different clientele. Well, I, we will. We will have to take that to a vote. Yeah. Any? Yeah. So, I, uh, you want to make a motion? Or you want me to? You can. Can I have one thing? Yeah. yeah. You. So I think, think we're about to make a motion. Sorry. Strict regular regulations on this. Is there a time frame when people sell down their inventory at least? If well, they've got that, a year was, supply? that was one of the discussions uh, it's that I want to have. Is if, if we were to institute this, mm. what kind of time frame are we talking? The regulations, we did leave that off. The right. communities around us have usually given two months. But, but I, lately, I've been recommend, recommending three months. Mm -hmm. It gives me more time to go to all the stores, make sure they understand the regulations, mm -hmm. know exactly which products are affected, and it gives them <clears> a chance <throat> to sell them. Mm -hmm. You did that in January, right? <clears throat> Um, you mean when visited? I, I visited all the stores in January, mm -hmm. pre the public hearing, and explained what the regulations were that were being proposed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, if the board voted for any of these regulations, I would go back go to back. all of those stores. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would. <clears throat> the board of health would have already sent out the new regulations. It would be posted in the paper. Mm -hmm. But then I would go back and personally visit every single store with a hard copy of the regulation, make sure they understood what the regulations were, and then work with the with the store owner or store manager to identify every product that was affected. Mm -hmm. And we've done this successfully in other communities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, I guess the motion would be to um, accept the regulations as proposed with a implementation time of a given date? Well, that, yep, I would like to discuss the implementation, implementation date. Uh, okay. And I mean, Dan, you're the only person he, that has come before us to, to explain. Uh, Sadly, yes. I, I mean, our, our main objective is the public health, of this, especially the children in town. Uh, but if only but, this regulation did the job, it's not going to do the but, job. But Has I, it worked in Wakefield? It's, been but it's actually worked there, really well I, in Wakefield, and I can answer that question. What, what Thank you very much. Let's, I'm, I'm let's sorry, what, what was that? I, I missed that I'm question. Sorry. He wanted to know how it's working in Wakefield. So you open the door, I'm going to walk Please. in. Please. Well, I'm, I'm all in. So uh, my name is Ruth Clay. I'm the health director in Wakefield. I've been the health director there for eight, eight 
nine years, I don't know, I lost track. And uh, the Board of Health there passed these regulations a couple of years ago. Nobody's gone out of business. No owner has come to us saying that they're about to go out of business. Um, it's a pretty healthy, thriving community. And as long as I have the floor, um, I'll put my two cents in since I've been around from the very beginning of tobacco control regulations in Reading. There hasn't been a time that the Board of Health has entertained passing tobacco regulations or revising regulations that industry has not come to the uh, table and said that the sky is going to fall and that they're going to go out of business and it's not good for business, blah, blah, blah. And although that is not a concern of the Board of Health, the Board of Health can only make regulations based on health decisions. Um, there has not, that has not happened any time any of the regulations have been passed, including the very first regulations, which were to ban smoking in restaurants, which at the time was pretty much heresy. And um, I, had, I had the head of member services of the Mass Restaurant Association in my office. Nobody was gonna eat in the restaurants in Reading. They were gonna go to everywhere else. And I don't need to tell you how well the restaurants in Reading are thriving and how many more restaurants we've had since that time. So <clears throat> all I can say is, I don't know, 50 odd boards of health have done these regulations. Nobody's gone out of business. And you, you know, that's just the way it is. Okay, so we were discussing the, t implementation, the implementation time. time. Um, and yeah. Maureen suggested uh, a three month three months. implementation. July 1st. Hmm? July 1st. And? I requested, I just say six months just to sell down inventory. I mean, why discount the inventory? There's very little profit margin, anyways. It takes a lot to move something like that off the shelf. And, and I would like to mm -hmm. offer something in between. Um, Medford Board of Health just voted yesterday to implement these same regulations <clears> in <throat> many more stores than um, Reading. And just um, in the interest of my workload, because I do feel it's important to make visits, and I make three monthly visits. I go three times, three mm -hmm. months in a row before, um, not necessarily before the effective date, but before anybody would be penalized in any way. And um, Medford has selected um, they didn't want to do, do July 1st because of the holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so they did July, I think it's July 10th, whatever that Monday is in July, I think it's July 10th. So that's their effective date. Um, if the board would consider, I would, I would suggest August 1st. And then that's I'd have another give you time month, to... another, yeah, an extra month in there mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, all the visits to Reading stores were, were done and with enough time to explain and that's, go through the inventory. That's four plus months. Yep. Mm. And School's out for the summer. Yeah. That's what and, I'm thinking about. And, uh, but, but I can I do mean, it in July. I'm just... Right. Yeah. Well, um, I'd like Marine. I mean, I'm not thrilled about waiting until August 1st, but, it, I mean, we need Marine. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been a, a big help to the board. So I, I would mm -hmm. I would uh, I would make a motion to accept the regulations uh, in the public health draft <coughs> um, with that one citation correction that I that I that was noted in the draft uh, um, to be to start on August first, two thousand seventeen. Okay. Any second? Second. And any discussion, any further discussion on the matter? <coughs> uh, the motion to accept the regulations on August the 1st. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, regulations have passed as of August 1st. Can I just ask a fast question? The regular, this is my first meeting, by the way, ever to any town, I think. Any way I can get a copy of those regulations in writing? They're, sure, they're, they're on the website. They are right up on the web. Can you get on the web? Or oh, yeah, I, I mean, can, sure I could. I just, could. 
we well, it's on the original draft, right? Are you going to have a final? Uh, it's the proposed draft. Well, I'd like to it, see it, that. Because I'd like to see that. Um, sure. Uh, the number of permits addressed, too. I still don't think that was cleared up at the last meeting. Um, yeah. Uh, do you want to explain the permits, or? Is that the, ni the 19 permits? Yeah, 18 Currently, plus there's one. 18, there's 19. It's, I think it's, it, yeah. it's I took from one. the last meeting that there'll always be 19. N no, when, when the, when, es when es establishment closes, the permit is retired, so it would be unless reduced. It would be reduced by one, unless to, yeah. Un yeah, unless it's sold to a, uh, a proprietor that will be taking over the tobacco permit business as the business. Oh, I can't get online. So a retailer who changes hands is protected. Correct. Yes. If they meet whatever. If they meet within sixty days yes. of getting the permit. Even if they're within that. Yeah. Zone of the school, we can look out of that because there's one store that sells tobacco that's within the thousand right. feet. Within a thousand feet, they can continue. So, if someone wanted to retire and move on and sell their store, they'd be able to pass on the tobacco permit. Yes, correct. Right. I'm sure there'll be terms and conditions. As yeah. long as they, as long as they do within 60 days, the yeah. new owner applies within 60 days. Thank you. The other item that uh, I, I was curious about was uh, Andrew mentioned at the board of health meeting you were grandfathering somebody because of. It's their retirement. So, so yeah, well, <coughs> I'll repeat what I said at the Board of Selectmen meeting, uh, John, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. And that was, um, it's, we don't use the term grandfathering, um, but we do say that if, uh, if, if someone retires and sells their business, uh, the permit can be transferred uh, if, it's, if it's transferred within 60 days. And that, furthermore, there is one retailer in town that does, that falls between the 500 and the 1,000 foot uh, distance from a, high, a school, and um, because that person already has a business there, um, we and has obviously invested in that business, and that's the person's retirement plan. We didn't want to um, take away from him, the person the, the retailer's retirement plan, so. The, Just so you know, my store is my retirement plan. So. Yeah, right. So the, but I'm trying to answer your question. Yeah, so the the um, the regulation says that even though that retailer is within, if a retailer is within a thousand feet of the school, if they currently have a permit and they close their store and they go to sell it, um, if the new owner picks up that can pick up that permit within sixty days and continue to sell tobacco. So why don't you make it 500 so that everybody's on the same? Well, we talked about this at the public well, hearing. That was that was all part of our discussions. Yeah, we had some spirited some. discussion during our deliberations here, <coughs> and that was one of the ones that we decided that, to do. And I, that was asked at the board of selectmen meeting too, John. And I I okay. noted that we did that to be consistent with the medical marijuana law or or town bylaw. Okay. Do they plan on doing some more spot checks from now till August 1st since everyone will be probably reducing their prices on the eat liquid juices and all that stuff? You know, it probably might be a heightened thing because kids will be talking about there's a sale going on. So you might want to <clears> consider <throat> looking into that as well. Just food for thought. So right. the program that funds the work that I do has two requirements and one is that cigarette check, which is actually a federal law. Right. Mm -hmm. And then because this money comes from the CDC, so we have to do what that legislation called for, and that's the sign our check, then the state pays for one round of little cigars or um, other, you know, other tobacco, right. chewing tobacco, a cigarette or whatever. The sign our check for Reading has been done for this year, and the little cigar or whatever check has not been done. So I will be doing one of those checks between now and July 1st. Yeah, I would think it would just yeah. be important it's because the, kids would talk the, and say, hey, the they're year trying to load inventory. Inventory. So I have to do that check between now and 6.30, so it has nothing to do with this right. regulation, it's just part of the <clears throat> program. Yep. Okay. okay, I guess next on our agenda would be the discussion on marijuana. Uh, I, guess, I guess we have offered and have been asked to give a statement regarding the marijuana 
uh, ballot question on April 4th. Do you have a copy of that, Darlene? I don't see it in the packet. I mean, I saw it. I have it, but not. I can't uh, download it. Like having a cigarette break? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Jesus, yeah. I know you probably want one. I'm dying. <clears throat> yeah, I'm dying. Yeah, I'm dying. Yeah. In both ways. <laughs> that was mean. It's for me. It's for you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought it was my. The little article I wrote uh, was basically uh, based similar on the similar premise that we have to protect our children. Mm -hmm. uh, all, all of my research was pretty much on its effects on children mm. and what can we do to prevent children from obtaining marijuana. Mm. Uh, did, did anybody get a chance to read? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Okay. Yeah, I, I did. I think I I looked at it mainly, f you know, with the same eye that we write <clears throat> our articles mm -hmm. on, and um, I think that we, we need to include add some citations. For I, I, I did put those on. I, you did. I do oh, have okay. citations. I'm sorry, I didn't put them on. Uh, uh, I can just. Uh, down yeah. at the bottom is yeah. where my my list of uh, okay. So um, usually these are we write articles on health issues that address the town. <clears throat> I'm not. I, I, do boards of health? This is a question I don't know. Weigh in on town ballot questions? Well, I. Did you find anything about I, that? About I mean, we didn't about do it the, with the national vote on that. Right. We, we talked about it. I don't, uh, you were on the board that time. Yeah. We talked the, about doing that, but we didn't. I think our CASA had asked us to. We didn't weigh in on telling people. Well, and I, 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 go, out, I right. go out of my way to try to explain that I'm not suggesting how people vote. Right, right, just education. Basically education, this is what your children is exposed to, this is what the effects may be. Uh, I don't want to suggest, I don't want to have anything, anything to do with telling adults how they should behave. Mm -hmm. uh, that was written strictly with children's health mm -hmm. in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very similar to what we have done with our tobacco regulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, if you, uh, so if you could put the citations so I, in, mm -hmm. in by each statement, for example, some of the statements, um, and then I could quickly re-review it, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, as long as we've discussed it in a public meeting, I think in the past the way we, we did these was we presented them at, at a meet open meeting yep. discussed it went back and forth gave our inputs and then the chair mm -hmm. um, published it so um, if you could just insert the citation so uh, I, I it's clear what statements come from what source mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that um, and then I could then I can comment in more detail. And put out your comment, and you can. And then if you think we need to discuss it again at another meeting, we can we can hold another meeting. Um, that's that's. I'll leave that up to you. Um, I I try to. You know I would encourage the board to keep the statements as scientifically accurate and crisp. As possible, so that mm -hmm. we, uh, it, I, as you know, I wrote the article. Or I, I, I did the first draft of the article for the alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, yep. mm -hmm. and it was extremely difficult to find. Mm -hmm. 
good mm. scientific. The funny thing, of most of that, most of those are from like 2016, 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I see. see. John, you know, if you take a look, yeah, yeah, uh, they're yeah. all fairly recent. Right. Uh, I mean, a lot of these may not even have been published when yeah. you did yours. Mm. I looked at some of the Samsha, uh, Samsha, mm -hmm. Samsha short report. That's, that's um, tongue twister. But I did look at some of that, and I think we want to be careful about um, confusing correlation with causality. In some cases, um, like for example, we know that tobacco or, or deaths associated with tobacco are the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. That's a clear, direct mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, cause, and effect. cause and effect that we know about. Um, saying, you know, I'm, re I'm reluctant to, to, to give the implication that we're, implication that we're making conclusions from, um, from cor correlative data, because mm -hmm. um, that can often be misleading. Mm -hmm. um, of course, mm -hmm. a good example doesn't come to mind, but you know, I if I go outside and I get a cold, I get a cold after I go outside with wet hair, I think that I got a cold, I got a head cold because I went outside with wet hair, when in fact I got a cold because I got I caught a virus from somebody. So that, that's the But you're also going to have a, a high risk population like in my job. We have these old animals on arthritis medication mm -hmm. and a lot of them die. They die because they're old, not because they're on arthritis medication. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's like a false correlation. So I think with some of these things, you can, if you take a certain population and you add something to them, yeah. well, that population is going to have this happen, but it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that thing. I, that's a good question. And I think the thing I'd want to stress on this, John, is the, you know, for at use with, I, I understand that the ballot question is for 21 and over, but similar to the, the flavored, uh, you know, the, the watermelon flavored cigars. If, if it, voters do decide to have commercial, sell commercial marijuana in town, um, at that point, I would look to the board to um, put some, put down some, unless the state does it already before we do, mm -hmm. but not design products that are eye-catching to kids um, and and I and I and it's been a while since I read that I, I read this I don't know <clears> if you discussed that in here but I would want to emphasize actually well, one of the one of the Colorado studies does yeah. does do that the, the recent Colorado study mm -hmm. emergency room visits have skyrocketed. right right but um, in addition to that I I mean I would like to stress the <clears throat> the caution of, of selling candies containing marijuana mm -hmm. because that's obviously attractive to kids. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, uh, let's see. Nancy has weighed in on this also. Mm. Uh, Nancy's. Nancy has stated, I'm not sure about the Board of Health seemingly being asked to take a position or give a statement on a ballot question. That being expressed, I thought the statement had too many biased overtones and perhaps it would be best uh, being issued by our CASA, which is completely understandable. The marijuana question elicits emotional responses. I believe the Board of Health article on the toxicity of recreational drugs did a good job of pro providing data to the public. Case in point, if I had written this statement, my personal bias would have been evident in pointing out that prohibition doesn't work. The best way to mitigate the negative impact on public health from legalized marijuana would be to enact a strong regulatory framework as seen in Washington and Colorado. Regulations do work, and I would prefer Reading take the steps to write mar marijuana regulations than letting some surrounding town do a poor job. However, that would infer support of retail marijuana in Reading. Similarly, I have pointed out that Mass has over 2,000 deaths from opiate overdoses. The only thing that has apparently decreased opiate overdoses is the availability of medical marijuana, according to JAMA and Rancor. There lies some implication to recreational marijuana as well, 
Again, that information serves to influence voters. I am reminded that Kevin Hill, guru of marijuana and a previous speaker to the Reading community, actually spoke in support of legalizing marijuana because this issue is very complex. The Reading voters did not reflect the state vote, and I suspect they have not, over the course of a few months, changed their position. I think we should not throw our hats into the ring, and it's not about regulating. Without more research, we are very limited in what we can actually give as scientific data. Therefore, I have cut out the repeated statements focused only on children and teens, as the impact should be addressed on men, women, and children. I've also made it part of much shorter with the focus on the developing brain. We cannot provide scientific data on behavioral health and addiction treatment, as we have no research. What we can share is we don't know very much. Let the readers decide to err on the side of caution. The Board of Health article previously written could be run alongside the statement. On Did April, you read that? We read that. I missed that last sentence. What we can sorry. share. What we can <coughs> share is we don't know very much. Mm. Let the readers decide to err, 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 err on the side of caution. Uh -huh. The Board of Health article previously written could be run alongside the statement. Uh, this other statement. The other, I guess the the other statement. That we might or might not make. The, okay. Can I just uh, <coughs> comment because the as an advisory committee to the board of selectmen, you were asked to look at the question mm -hmm. um, with particular interest, since you have properly, you know, been on a on a quest to <coughs> protect our children wisely. I think no one takes issue with that. I think everybody is on board with protecting our children. Um, matter of fact, this came up um, during your recent mm -hmm. visit, mm -hmm. uh, Andy. And during that visit, it was asked directly, would the Board of Health feel the same way in protecting children on the marijuana issue? And you indicated that you thought that protecting children was primary. I agree with that. At least I don't want to put words I, I in your said, mouth. I think but the what what was I the the at the previous meeting, I think uh, the town manager indicated that um, our casa had said to him that the board of health s was supported not selling commercial marijuana in town and. I wanted to make sh sure that we had we hadn't been asked about the topic. Well, and um, so you have since three weeks ago been asked directly right. about the topic of um, of commercial distribution mm -hmm. inside the city limits of or the town limits of Reading. Yeah, um, commercial. I mm -hmm. mean, this has mm -hmm. no no indication whatsoever, no implication on personal use. Mm -hmm. By adults, it has you know no issues around what was passed in the law about the ability to personally grow and use, mm -hmm. um, and so the idea of the far-reaching implications that um, that Nancy mentions in her note um, on men, women, and children that mm -hmm. question is not you know taken up in the ballot question, and mm -hmm. the question that the board of selectmen is asking you is. From a Board of Health standpoint, particularly in concert with your quest to protect our children, how do you feel as a Board of Health about the commercial distribution of recreational products inside the city limits as it relates to children? Because John's research does clearly point out that in states where this is going on, the spike of children in emergency rooms is kind of off the like charts. Five-fold. Five-fold. Yeah. So what the, what the Board of Selectmen was hoping to hear from you, and I think should hear from you, I think the citizens need to hear from you, on the topic of commercial distribution inside <clears throat> of our town limits. It's really not a, it's not a question of whether or not the law has been passed mm. for adults mm -hmm. to use recreational marijuana. Now it's up to the state. Their hearing started this week. and. God knows when you know they'll sort through hearings, regulations, and so forth, and we realize that. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, the town wanted to take its only option within that window mm -hmm. to retain itself um, options. And because we think this is a health issue, mm -hmm. and particularly in concert with you know, what you have rightly done in protecting children, we would like to hear from you on this topic relative to the commercial distribution. The rest of it, you know, way too, it's way too fuzzy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's too much that the state's going to do. So um, I think the citizens, uh, rightly, um, you'll see published this week, uh, frequently asked questions from um, the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. on the topic, factual, really not, mm -hmm. you know, not saying pass it, don't pass it. We really want to know what the citizens want to do, and this is really our only window of opportunity mm. to take advantage of the way the law was built. And because we think it's a health issue, and and you are an advisory committee to the Board of Selectmen, <clears throat> we're asking you to really narrow your focus. And I thought in John's piece, and I looked at that, I thought he did a really good job. Um, a conclusion, although you didn't draw one to tell people how to vote, you certainly gave factual information that would indicate that this is maybe something you want to really consider and think twice about in the in the protection of mm -hmm. our of the children in this town. So um, that being the case, um, processing the grander, you know, is marijuana good for people or not good for people? What's the implications long term? We do know that developing brains um, are affected by every substance that you guys look at and regulate. Um, so I, it seems pretty straightforward <clears throat> to me, and we're hopeful that you'll take a position that can be published in time for the, for the citizens of this town to hear from their Board of Health on how they feel about recreational, commercial distribution inside of our town lines. That's what we're looking for, and that's all, really, where the Board of Health stands on. My understanding of the role of the Board of Health is, is we don't act as an advisory uh, board. Um, we're, we're a regulatory board, and um, all from the state law that I've read, um, we are supposed to, um, you're right that we're supposed to promote the health of the community, uh, et cetera. Um, I guess, uh, and, and, and this is what I, this is why, what I, the reason I asked John the question about um, do boards of health typically weigh in on ballot questions and and say we think this is good for the public you know this is <clears throat> not a public health problem or a public health problem. Um, well, I did. I whoops, I did uh, contact Cheryl. Mm. What did she say? Uh, she said that she thought the ballot question was a good question. <laughs> our, Thanks, our, our ballot question was written very well and it was a good question yeah and i sent oh. it back and said gee that's <laughs> not what i was asking and nice grammar on that yeah that, that was uh, that was mm. that was her response and i mean here's the thing this is what this is what makes me feel a little uncomfortable if if tomorrow they put in a ballot to make ready in a dry town as far as alcohol is concerned and they ask the Board of Health to weigh in on that, <clears throat> would we would we weigh in on that? And uh, you said earlier well, I mean, so, anyway, so, so, so we right, we don't we don't regulate those things, which is why I'm reluctant to uh, weigh in on. I mean, it's such a complicated. We could. Issue. Public issue. We could. We, uh, I think there are a lot of public health issues. In correct. Yeah. And so, uh, and just to be clear, whether or not passing allowing the sale of marijuana in Reading, um, what that effect would have on the public health. Uh, Can I ask I a question as a resident, as a candidate for selectman? Where do you stand on the issue? I'm That's what I'd like here to know. As a member of the Board of Health. This is the yeah, Board of Health meeting. That's this is the Board of Health. So, let, if we could come back to you know on the on the question of advisory um, boards yeah. and commissions, yeah. um, every member of this <clears throat> um, Board of Health mm. is appointed by the Board of Selectmen, and by definition in the Charter, this is a advisory. So we're clear. This is an advisory <clears throat> committee. Now, 
it, like conservation, um, the historic commission, uh, CPDC, those are, and, and the Board of Health, mm. have extra powers that come, that are inured from the state regulation. Right. No question about that. So, um, you know, our question really, and, and if you don't want to take a position on it, okay, then I guess that's what we'll have to go with. But we felt it was important because you guys are really doing a, an exceptionally good job um, and, and you raise the topic about protecting youth and I, I no issue for me, no, I mean, I'm with you, I got it. And I understand that um, your decision tonight, for example, is one that doesn't guarantee that kids aren't gonna be able to buy. What it does is it further makes it more challenging for a child to become involved with something they shouldn't be involved with. And I, and I, and I understand the spirit of where you're coming from. So on this same topic, <clears throat> And this really came out of your last visit, Andy, to mm. clarify mm -hmm. certain positions of the Board of Health um, the last time you visited. Um, and so that spawned this question. Mm. I mean, the valid question, the Board of Selectmen clearly was going to be, that was going to be done. I mean, mm -hmm. we had a discussion and it's on, it's, it is a valid question. It is Article 1 of the town meeting. It will be on the April 4th ballot. There's no question about that. And it's written. I don't know who you talked to that said it's written very well, but you know, um, we've been told that it has been written, first of all, within the framework mm -hmm. of Article 4, mm -hmm. of Question 4 that recently passed. Um, we have been told definitively that whatever the voters choose to, you know, to support or to support it, which would prohibit uh, recreational um, commerce, mm -hmm. um, uh, commercial properties, or if they choose not to. Hey, we've already heard from the Attorney General that based on the writing of our, of our document that they are happy to enforce whatever our voters decide because question four clearly calls for a vote of the voters mm -hmm. in order to be able to come to a conclusion about the prohibition of commercial distribution of recreational marijuana inside of our town. Yeah. Okay. Really so, based, Andy, on your visit, yeah. um, you said we haven't been asked, so we asked you. Got and we're asking you and we're hopeful that you will take a position on that particular ballot question as it relates your work on the Board of Health. Thank you. Um, so, I, I would like to uh, take, I mean, Nancy uh, is much more expert, I mean, I, her job is, I believe, along, you mm -hmm. know, she works in this area, mm -hmm. so um, I, I'd like to take a look at her comments in more detail. Mm -hmm. Look sure. at your article in, in, in along with the um, the citations, citations. And, mm -hmm. the citations and then we can and then we can get back to the um, yeah. the selectmen sure. the answer. But we may have to meet again next week or something uh, to discuss. Okay. Because we can't. Um, right. Off we deal. can't deliberate. Exactly. Out uh, of open meeting. Although I could send I could send all of that to Gene, like yeah, soon. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's today? I could probably but, get that off to Gene right. tomorrow. But we would have to then vote on it. Yep. To, to, and we can't do that outside of Correct. public meeting. But I, uh, Darlene, how soon could we get a meeting next week? Uh, we only need like 48 hours. Well, 48 to hours get you, a, get you posted. Okay. I'm out of town Thursday and Friday. All right. Uh, so I think Keep I in mind that, you know, a week from Tuesday is when this is going to be before the right, voters. Right. Right. So and your your input is really important in a timely way. Um, I'm I'm guessing, um, John. You've clearly done some research. It sounds like Nancy does. Nancy, of course, as an associate member, won't be voting on any position you take, but clearly she's available for input and is certainly mm -hmm. part of your team. I understand that. She has sent uh, sent written information. Um, I guess I'm asking the other two members, do you have an opinion at this time that you'd like to discuss in open meeting? 
I do not. I need no, more information. I need, I need to review what Nancy sent in. I'd like to review the this article with the citations inserted in the proper places. So let me, let me ask a follow-up to that then. Can we expect an opinion to come from this board in ample time to have it published both on the website and possibly in the newspaper so that the voters will have several days to mm -hmm. reflect on your thoughts? So today's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We can all look at our calendars tonight and email it. Mm -hmm. And we can discuss a meeting date yep. per, uh, by, e by could, email. Could we uh, implore Bob to get the ombudsman to speed up the process once we do? If, speed up the process of? He has, to review. Review. he has to review everything. Oh, absolutely. That can be done. That can be done on an hour's notice. I oh. can guarantee you, given that the timeliness of this topic, mm -hmm. this will not, this will move right along. I mean, okay. That has been the point. That's the reason we send this off to you three weeks ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Yeah, we just couldn't, we can't discuss things outside of open meeting. I'm very clear on the open meeting rules, believe me. Okay. So Let we me can get that off to Gene, see if I can get that off tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, what is our schedules for next week? Oh. I don't have my calendar. What's the, what are the dates? The 20. So while they're scheduling, Pat, I know that you're currently the president of our CASA, I just of our board, of what I serve on. Um, have you guys had a chance Monday's to take a position that you'd like to publish as well? Monday's the 27th, 28th. Tuesday's the 28th. Um, I can do probably Monday. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, yeah, but it's certainly but something. And you guys yeah, are I'm less I'm constrained by public what? meeting I'm rules. I'm gone I mean, yeah, I think those, I mean, we can, so Monday, that board can interact. It would yeah. be tight for me, but I can I probably say, make it by 5.30, maybe 6. No, I can't make it until 7 on Monday. Okay. Do you want to uh, Tuesday? Tuesday, I, I have. I can have Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday, I, I have two. Let me just... It'd be, it'd be worth... Yeah, yeah I, 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 I can do... Uh, I think it'd be valuable. I can tell you tonight. Okay. 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 Um, can you, is Wednesday an alternative too? Uh, looks like Wednesday is my So let's do Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'll be here. 7 a.m. Wednesday. When are you leaving? We can do <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let, let me. Um, let's work. Let's choose Tuesday. I'm going Thursday and Friday. We'd have to do Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, if Andy can. I gotta. Swing it. Oh, yeah. I just got back from Colorado, so I had some personal experience with that. Well, there you go. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, I've actually heard that. I've spent a lot of time with uh, Senator Lewis recently um, because, as you are probably aware, he was um, he led a <clears throat> delegation that investigated um, their findings in Colorado and brought back a very interesting um, discussion, actually, to our CASA meeting. Uh, pretty strongly, you know, opposed to question four across the board, um, so. Just FYI, uh, Jason Lewis's uh, proposal does have language uh, to uh, restrict tobacco use and uh, possession. I, I know he's in favor of what, we've what you talked about earlier. I, you know, I've talked to him about it. Um, it hasn't found its way to either the floor of the House or the Senate. Not, it's not there yet, but it's, it's language, basically, it's a slap on the wrist uh, with no, no, no record uh, and possible uh, completion of a substance abuse awareness program. Right. No record of such notification shall be logged in any report or file kept in a person's record. And no violation under the section shall be used in the furtherance of an ongoing or future criminal investigation. Yeah, that's actually not dissimilar from what many police forces are doing now with alcohol. That's for the they're, they're trying to, they're trying to use alternate <clears throat> methods of yeah. enforcement, which <coughs> they're finding to be, you know, very powerful, and you know, mm -hmm. and they really seem to help. So, did you guys decide on when you're going to reconvene to take no, a position? We're gonna, we have to we're, do we're it. We're going to do it. I think Tuesday might be the only day we can do it. Okay, so that would be. Uh, we're not, but we're not sure, John. We need to go back and check our calendars yeah, tonight, and we'll we email we email each other to so come up with a date. So, is it is it safe to say that you will 
find the time so that the voters can hear from you. I'll that, certainly try. That we'll do our very best. My, yeah. That is my and goal. and if 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 one of us can't make it, Nancy yeah. can substitute. Right, right, right. Uh, as an alderman member, and she's more qualified than I am, actually. Um, well, I think I think you're all equally qualified to answer a pretty straightforward question. Um, okay. So, let's. Um, we have some health issues. We have some health yes, issues. So we health should we we you. can CC yeah. you, John. With if, are, we, are you going to want to be at our meet next? Yeah. Month? Well, I, you know, I'm your liaison. Mm -hmm. You know, um, also happen to be the current chair. So we are interested, and I've been asked, um, you know, to mm -hmm. be sure to do follow up with you separately by the selectmen. Um, who have said, will we have something for the voters to review? And I mm -hmm. said, I'm, I'm confident that the Board of Health will take the request seriously and be able to give adequate time to the voters to hear what mm -hmm. they think about this. So we're very hopeful that you can opine um, and give them something to, give the voters something to work with. Very good. Uh, let's see. The, Bob, you're on the agenda now with our right. report, which we are in need of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this I'll go is as an fast update. as I can. I can close this. I can close this. This is an updated one. Yeah, this is an updated one. Um, this is the first one I did one break. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, <clears throat> this is just a uh, health agents update. Uh, as you know, I've been appointed as the interim health agent to help assist. Um, provide technical assistance and guidance to the staff and, and uh, the department. Um, so this is basically what I've done up until yesterday. Um, so I don't know if, if you want to glance through it real quick uh, or you want me to go down each line item, I can do that as well. You might have certain questions. Um, I know the one thing uh, from reading the minutes that the board had some concerns with um, uh, restaurant Pavarotti mm -hmm. in their specifications for a new hood system mm -hmm. that came in yesterday. Okay. Um, they had they had previously submitted one, uh, but it wasn't a architectural plan uh, that they should have submitted. Um, so I went back down and met with the permit holders, and, and we had a great discussion. Um, you know, for you know me trying to help assist them along this process and, and giving them different avenues in which they can uh -huh. uh, pursue as a business. Uh, here in the town of, of uh, Reading, uh -huh. um, and so they were open to some of the ideas that I suggested to them. Um, but in the interim of that, they, I, I explained to them that they needed to get this reported to you as the board because there was a deadline mm -hmm. or, or benchmark for them to do so. Um, they did instruct to me that they will have this completed at some point before I think it's July first. July first, I think. It okay. Was. Yeah. So they'll they'll have that completed. They're just going to uh, seek out some other options as far as bids. Um, you know, and I, I recommended that they should do so, and not rely on just one bid. Mm -hmm. um, but so long as it's a, a licensed company in the state of Massachusetts that is going to do this, and obviously they have to follow the proper procedure with the building department mm -hmm. and then pull the appropriate permits to do so. Um, so that was really the first thing um, that I worked on when I was here. Um, the next thing is Cafe Nero, which is going into Ooh, the... Can I, can I ask you, I'm sorry, on Restaurant Pavarotti, you asked when the, the due date was for them. For the plans. For the plans. It was back in January. And did, which, so I'm confused, did we get the plans? That's the plan right here. This is the plan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you want okay. to take a look at That's okay. I, I misunderstood you. I, I guess when I came on, there was a deadline that they were closing in on or oh, had yeah, yeah, um, yes. So I took the initiative to get on and meet with them, introduce yeah. myself, yeah. Um, explain to them the situation. Right. That, you know, we needed to kind of expedite this for yeah. them yep. um, mm -hmm. to satisfy the board's uh, <clears throat> deadline. Um, and, and that's what we've got. So okay, we've good. gotten them into compliance good. with that. Good. Um, Cafe Nero, um, that is a. Um, Establishment that's looking to go into with the old, uh, I guess, Reading Wine and Cheese Shop next mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Venetian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know Steve, when Steve was here, uh, Delario, mm -hmm. uh, approved that site plan. I was asked to re review it. 
Um, I did find some issues with it, um, and I contacted the consultant, which is Frank uh, Giacloni. Mm -hmm. um, there were some issues missing with respect to interior grease traps and the exterior trash uh, storage area. Um, so I'm still waiting to get um, some information on that. But in the interim of that, I did speak with Frank. Um, Frank is, is actually the director of public health up in Newburyport who took the job that I originally had. Um, so I know Frank yeah. very well. Yeah. Um, so he was going to give me that information. Um, in the interim of all of that, we had a complaint about the dumpster issue over at 650 Main Street. And I'll get into that a little bit, mm. which kind of coincides with this uh, issue here. Uh, but according to Frank, um, these, uh, the Cafe Nero organization is uh, putting together an establishment, I believe, in Arlington. Once that's completed, they're going to come and start working on the establishment here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why you see the building today as being a little bit dormant. Okay. Um, okay. And so the assistant town manager wanted an update on that, and that's what we kind of went and did. Mm -hmm. um, so we're staying on top of that. Um, Colombo Pizza, um, these gentlemen came in, I met with them, um, I'm familiar with them, they have a, an establishment in Winchester, which I previously uh, was doing some consultant work there, um, they wanted to basically take out a dishwasher, um, so I reviewed what their request was, allowed them to do that with the contingencies or uh, restrictions on their permit, that they can only now use disposable products as opposed to ceramic plates and, and cups. Um, if they want to use ceramic plates and silver and stuff like that, they have to have a mechanical dishwasher with a high temp of 180. Um, so they agreed and understood what the requirements were moving forward mm -hmm. uh, to be uh, allowed to be able to take that dishwasher out. Um, I, I really didn't see an issue with it, with them going to disposal. As long as they have the minimum standards of a three compartment sink and they utilize the wash, rinse, and sanitize method mm -hmm. uh, under the code, they, they should be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Um, I reviewed some temporary food applications. Uh, February 24th and 25th, we had a, a wrestling, uh, uh, up at the high school, we had a wrestling match mm -hmm. um, event. Um, we sent one of the food inspectors out, John Freilich, uh, found no issues. They were in code compliance with the mm -hmm. Massachusetts State Sanitary Code. Um, currently, I'm reviewing uh, applications as they are ongoing, coming in for Calarusso's mm -hmm. uh, farm stand, I believe it is, mm -hmm. uh, their appreciation day. Yep. Uh, I've met and, and been working with uh, Joe over there yep. uh, on the applicants just to make sure that everyone's code compliant when they submit their application. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a continuous process. They do this every, just yes. so you know, they do this every year. Yeah, it sounds like a good time. It is. Mm. Yeah. It is. Um, and there's... Traffic. Yeah. Well, what we do is, is because you or the town, per se, gets outside vendors uh, from other communities in which we know nothing about. Mm. Uh, we have to do a background check on them with respect to oh. ensuring that they're properly permitted from mm -hmm. the local regulatory authority, uh, that they're properly insured, mm -hmm. make sure that they have their food manager certification, allergen awareness. Um, so we have to do due diligence to ensure that they're properly permitted and, and insured. I feel like there was an issue last year with that. Yeah, there were some questions around, uh, I think, making of donuts, deep okay. frying yeah, donuts. But uh, you'll, I'm sure it sounds like you got it covered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, I mean, I've... You could confiscate the donuts and bring them to the <laughs> 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 need to joke about I, You know, I'm talking, <laughs> in, in the few conversations I've had with Joe, I, you know, I really don't see an issue. I mean, they understand. They, they get it. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, they want to be co-compliant, too. Um, and, and we're working to get them there so that they can have a successful event. Mm -hmm. He's. They've had a good history with us on okay. this. I remember this last year and the year before, they worked with the our health agent mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. to, yeah. to do this, exactly what you're describing. Yeah. Um, March seventh is an event coming up with the high school the, uh, with uh, Joe Mulligan. I think he's the band department mm -hmm. up there. So yeah. again, we're working with him on the permit uh, process. Um, we just recently had the uh, robotics event up mm -hmm. at the high school. That was a three-day event. Uh, I went and did the pre-operational inspection on Friday night and Saturday. Um, I had John Freilich follow up because there was a good amount of food that was being sold and uh, the amount of people that were there. I felt it was important that we have somebody in place to monitor mm -hmm. during the day. Yes. Not all day, but just a couple of hours just to ensure that uh, they were staying with code compliance. Um, 
I met with uh, the Rotary, uh, the Reading Rotary member, Kathy Spur, mm -hmm. uh, regarding the taste of, I think it's called Taste of, uh, taste Metro, of Metro, 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 Metro North. Metro yeah. North. Um, I worked uh, exclusively with Kathy last year uh, mm -hmm. in North Reading because the event was in North oh. Reading. So I'm very familiar with the process mm -hmm. and what they're going to be doing. And so we're working together on that. Um, and that shouldn't be an issue either. Even um, though we stole it from North Reading. Well, it goes back. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, you guys are happy. You can have it. <laughs> we, won't, we won't be going back to North Reading any longer. Oh, that's no, right. No, I'm, that's my Rotary Club, and I'm on that. Oh, okay. So oh. it's staying in Reading. Okay. There we go. See? <laughs> but North Reading may do their own. Is what may happen. Yeah, that's I, I think um, I think the chamber is looking to do their own now too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a discussion with Barbara. Uh, I hope I'm saying this right. Malvini. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be doing the Reading 5K road race. Um, so we're working again with her uh, to try to get them properly permitted. Um, also, uh, I had a discussion with Whitney Goodhue. From the Girl Scout mm -hmm. troops, um, same thing. We're working with them um, to get them properly permitted for their event. Try to expedite it, make it a little bit more simpler for these folks when they come in to, Excellent. you know, expedite the process. Um, so the next item, the, the issue that we had uh, regarding the dumpster issue. Mm. Um, what we had over at 650 Main Street is we had one of our food inspectors out, um, and this has had a little bit of history of the area not properly being maintained. <coughs> and what I found was there's multiple issues here, um, the way this was set up. I think back in the day, um, you know, this area in question, very small and mm -hmm. very, you know, uh, compact. I think, and again, I could be wrong, I think back in the day it was probably approved for one or two restaurants. Mm -hmm. Now you're potentially introducing <coughs> a third restaurant. Yeah. The issues that I found there were, um, you know, it, it wasn't enough storage space. It wasn't conducive for what the intended purpose is for. Yeah. Um, but also, there's multiple side agreements that um, the place has to be shoveled out by uh, the property management. Um, they weren't doing that. Therefore, the, the disposal company was coming. They couldn't get the dumpsters out oh. because it wasn't shoveled, so they were just leaving it. Mm -hmm. The permit holders were unfortunately couldn't get to the dumpsters because they weren't shoveled out, so they were just leaving the trash on the ground, mm -hmm. which hence created a public oh, nuisance oh, condition oh. for the town. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. And hence, we had a little issue with uh, infestation in the area. Welcome to uh. <laughs> So I met with all the parties. I met with the, the business owners. Um, I asked them what they'd like to see. What, what do they think, you know, in their opinion, would be a better solution? Um, you know, this, to me, ideally, uh, a trash compactor in that area would, would be suffice because yeah. you're not relying on someone to go out there and shovel who says they're going to shovel what they don't shovel. Right. Um, a trash compactor company or a trash disposal company that comes and just because there's traffic behind them says, <laughs> just going to go around the block. Um, so I, I've met with all the parties, and, and uh, the property manager um, has a gentleman by the name of Bob Ops, mm -hmm. and he proposed that they reconfigure it and take out the two three yarders and put one eight yarder, um, and they would get daily pickups. My suggestion to him is, is you know, go ahead and make that proposal. But mm -hmm. what I'd like to see is, is some other things coincide with that and what I mean by that is well, if you're going to do this you know what, what is the time going to get out of it for allowing you to do this because technically really it's an issue there it's going to be an ongoing issue it's going to continue to be an issue but what I like to see is some beautification issues there so if they're going to put up a new fence they're going to move this up a little bit I'd like to see some benches I'd like to see some flower uh, arrangements mm -hmm. there like you see across the way in that alleyway yeah and they've agreed mm -hmm. to do that and so um, I had a conversation with the assistant town manager on this, and, and so when I think she's going out for leave for a little bit, um, the discussion was that uh, myself and her and the planning department would go out there and look at it and see how we can make this conducive for what the town's needs are as far as you know, making it look nicer than what it is. Mm -hmm. Because if you saw some of the pictures, it was very uninviting. Mm -hmm. um, there was broken glass on the ground. Um, and, and, and things like that. It just it, it wasn't very nice. It was very unsanitary. And, you know, it, it's in my opinion that, you know, you want to try to get the business community a little bit involved in what they might want to see, what's going to make it easier for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's a, a good way to work with the community from, from this board. Mm -hmm. Where is this dumpster? It's 
I mean, it'll be, it's, it's behind CVS in that area? It's, mm -hmm. you know, that little walkway yes. that you go down? Yep. It's on the left-hand side. Okay. So, I mean, the way coming, you... Coming from Main, Main Street? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, right now, you got... There's, like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just... Not, it's been a problem for... For a long time. For a long time. I guess. I'll have to pay attention. That's the, the, the yeah. dog rumor is right there? Is that... Yes. Okay, I'll, yeah. that's where I go. I'll have to... I mean, if Dar I'm, Darling probably has a better memory of this. Yeah, than me, she, she provided me with all of We've that. had... We've struggled with this for a long time. I'm glad you're tackling it. Mm. And there were rats mm -hmm. there. This is a space for an eight yard dumpster. Yeah, thing. yeah. And so again, it leads me into my next. Um, mm -hmm. thing. So when I <laughs> went out there one night to take a look mm -hmm. at it, um, I noticed that there was a service master truck over by CBS. Um, so I went to kind of see what they were doing, and, and I asked the gentleman. I said, you know, what's up? What are you guys doing? And he said, well, we're pumping out water. I go. Where? <laughs> and he said, well, the pizza store. I said, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, Great. okay. So Your night just got longer. Uh, so uh, come to find out they had some sort of a backup. Um, so service master was there to clean it. Um, some sort of backup. Oh, don't go there. Just, yeah, they only had just one kind of a little, it was a little backup. It, it wasn't bad. Uh, <laughs> but uh, oh. talking to the service master guy that I, I knew him from moving when I worked in Stolen, and um, <laughs> You know, somebody had stuck some tree branches down a toilet, and uh, it kind of clogged up and flooded a few of the businesses. Um, but thankfully, Service Pro was there. They were addressing the issue. Um, but I still sent the food inspector out the next day to just kind of backtrack on it. One of the issues that I had was was one of the establishments, a food establishment, um, you know, had a, a slight problem with, you know, an infestation. Um, so we address that, and I, I kind of correlate that or relate that to what's going on with the dumpster issue. Yeah. Uh, so even more so why we're, we're really staying on top of that issue um, to make sure that whatever the end product is going to be, it's going to be sufficient for the betterment of the community. Um, and, and so we're, it's an ongoing process. So I'll continue to update the board while I'm here uh, with respect to, to that. Are you confident that they're, they're going to tackle the infestation? They're working yeah. on it right now. Actually, the next day we said we had them cited to treat and bait the area, uh -huh. um, had the restaurants. I mean, one of the things I would propose to the board moving forward is, is to, to take a look at their regulations with respect to food establishments. I know some of the things that we've done in the communities in which I've worked for mm -hmm. is is install a uh, regulation that um, you know that restaurants, because they do receive food from an outside source, yeah. have some sort of preventive maintenance plan, as opposed to addressing an issue when it happens. Well, after it happens. You want to try mm -hmm. to prevent that. So what I've always incorporated in the communities in which I worked for is that we have them have a monthly extermination report, irregardless if they need it. That's the preventive maintenance. That's how you curb um, any potential issues in the establishments. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's always worked well for us in, in the communities in which I work in. And the mm -hmm. trash bin, yeah, or the trash dumpster out there. What do you see as the best solution, especially if a third establishment comes in? Well, Is we're gonna we're gonna to handle the problem, or well, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this issue and visit this issue with with the other departments and I made some suggestions already to the assistant town manager and I'll make it here to the board yeah um, you know the gentleman is proposing something that he believes might work mm -hmm. and, and, and I want to you know give the business community that opportunity mm -hmm. I want to work with them um, right. so one of the things I would incorporate into this uh, plan is is to ensure that they get daily pickups yeah ensure the times of those pickups because i guess one of the issues that we're having here in this community is early morning pickups mm -hmm. and or this issue where the dumpster company can't get at it yeah so i would look at a particular time where there wouldn't be significant traffic flow right um, that would allow these gentlemen to come in and, and get that mm -hmm. um, put some sort of a best practice management plan together with the three establishments that are going to use it. Yeah. Uh, we did this in Cambridge when I worked in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a similar issue, um, is if there's uh, like four weeks in a month, let's say at this time we had four restaurants, we would make sure that each establishment was responsible for the upkeep of that area mm -hmm. once a week. So uh, give you an example, we were using uh, the House of Blues and an Indian restaurant. So one week the House of Blues would be responsible for maintaining that area. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next week it would be the next establishment. The next week would be the next establishment. Now, 
if somebody went and just dumped their trash in there thinking that you were going to take care of it, well, that's not part of the plan. You still right. have to adhere to what your responsibility is and get the trash into the dumpster. Now, if yeah. you don't, you'd probably be uh, properly cited uh, for that. So right. that is something that's worked extremely well in, in the communities when I've had issues like this where there were very condensed spaces yeah. um, to try to make them work. Yeah. Um, and it's an ongoing process. It's a, it's, you know, it's a trial by error, and you just got to see what works. And I think that, again, for me, this has been very successful. Okay. So I'm willing to give them the option of that yeah. if the board mm -hmm. uh, is willing oh. to go that route. Um, again, the other option is is to have them put in a trash compactor. Um, do you think letting them do what they're, how long would we know what they're doing is, well, is or not working? Yeah, I mean, we would put something in place where we would do monthly inspections as opposed to, you know, going out, doing the restaurant inspections once every two, uh, six months. This is something we'd do like an ongoing monitor, maybe even mm -hmm. once a week, just have somebody mm -hmm. go by and mm -hmm. check it out and just log it and uh, keep track of it. Okay. Um, and then, you know, at two months, do some sort of an evaluation, of, you know, three months, do an evaluation, and if it works, Good. If it doesn't, then we would incorporate them to, again, through the board and in the town, um, I would suggest that you, you know, have them put a trash compactor in. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, the trash compactor uh, eliminates a lot of different variables. It eliminates the worry of someone having to get out there and shovel. Mm -hmm. It eliminates the worry of a, a disposal company trying to get out there daily mm -hmm. um, with a trash compactor. You might only need to get out there once a week, once every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so there's pros and cons to both, I guess. Um, but again, I, I think you want to work with the business community in a sense sure. and, and maybe give them the option. But again, that's that's really for the board to decide. <coughs> we'll probably bring that up at our next at our next meeting. Okay. Yeah, was, I mean, if they're continuing to work on it, mm -hmm. I, but I'm glad that you're addressing it. It's been it's been sort of a nagging problem for a while, and I don't know if you've been back there, but it's a tight space. Yeah. And people park in front of the yeah. dumpster when they're not supposed to, and so that's why they can't. Empty it. There was a par I think there was a parking spot there, though, wasn't there? there was a <laughs> yeah. Area they, they, what they would do is the parking spot would still stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they would just bump the fence out a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the yep. parking spot was would, yep. the parking spot would still yep. stay. Uh, my only concern, really, looking at the draft proposal, was that where the the three yards are now, that would be open space. So. I want to go back to him and see what he's going to do with that open space. Maybe you open it up all together and put a couple of benches in there mm -hmm. and make it inviting for people who come out of the cafe in mm. the summertime to maybe mm. want to sit there and enjoy their coffee if the, yeah. mm. if the cafe is overcrowded. Um, but something to the effect where it's, it's um, appealing and, and goes with the town yeah. um, theme, I guess, mm. is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. Um, you know, that's what we try to work on when we're in North Reading when we, we have these issues that come up. Um, mm -hmm. So sounds, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Good. yeah. Nice All right. Job. Um, so some other food protection related issues. Um, I reviewed a late fee from the American Legion. Um, that was something that we looked at. Um, I reviewed the food inspectors reports uh, for last month from Joan Vitali and John Freilich. Uh, I met with the food inspector John Freilich. Uh, along with, with Joan and got updates from them as far as what's going on out there in the food service. Mm -hmm. um, I updated the food inspectors with the new draft M, uh, Department of Public Health draft food code just to make them aware of what's coming out probably in the next couple of months is going to be a new food code coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, had them uh, take a look at that just to familiarize themselves with that. Um, I did a restaurant inspection at Boys. And can I, can I, I'm sorry, can yep. I just interrupt you on that one? Does that mean our inspectors are going to have to come up with new forms, inspection forms and all that? <clears throat> um, possibly. What, what we did in, in my community is, yeah. is, you know, part of this new code, you have to develop a risk-based category. Uh -huh. um, so we've developed that in our community. I'll give you an example. Um, we have a couple of um, uh, Chinese restaurants that serve shellfish. Yeah. That would be a category four. That would require anywhere from two to three inspections a year. Um, we have a 7-Eleven store that doesn't do any potentially hazardous food products, just all packaged food. That would be a risk category one. Mm. So we would do them once a year. So the mm -hmm. focus here on the risk category is to focus on the more potentially uh, yeah. uh, food establishments as opposed to the ones that are not 
so much at risk. Yeah. Uh, with that comes new forms, mm -hmm. um, and with those new forms, they're actually pretty good. I use them in Winchester. Um, they're more, I want to say, business friendly. Mm -hmm. um, if you get critical violations, it allows the businesses to make those corrections on site, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually pretty good. Um, so we're going to go with that in the community in, in North Reading, and <clears throat> it would be my recommendation to this board that I think you'll probably have to follow suit with that. Yeah. Uh, but th that could be, you know, six months, a year from now, um, before that code is implemented. Okay. Um, so. I mean, if I'm here next month, I can certainly bring a copy. I can advise you guys on what some of the changes are that are in the new code. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably just a few too much to go through right now. Yeah, okay. I, I, got I, was just, I was just curious. Yeah. I was like, okay. oh, geez. Um, I had a uh, uh, establishment call requesting potluck guidelines. I gave them that. Mm -hmm. uh, I emailed some, uh, through Darlene. Um, we had the winter storm. We emailed out um, some guidelines for storm management to restaurants in case that they lose power. Uh -huh. um, we also, through Darlene, updated the Board of Health website uh, for residents and businesses to go there and get some education and guideline tips in case that they lose power during mm -hmm. that most recent storm. Um, met with the uh, manager over at Anthony's yesterday <coughs> to talk about them putting in a new ice machine. Mm -hmm. uh, I met with uh, the manager over at uh, Meadowbrook Country Club about a potential mobile unit that they want to put in. And that's a little bit of ways down the line, but <coughs> yeah, I can get into that later with the board. Um, they just basically want to put a mobile unit in, and he explained it. He's going to get us the specifications to review. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's, he's something that he's going to order from, I think it was Virginia. I made the suggestion that, you know, before he make that purchase, get the specifications and call for a joint meeting with the Board of Health, fire, uh, plumbing inspectors, because a lot of times when they outfit those, they don't outfit those for Massachusetts code. Mm -hmm. They outfit them for that particular state's code. So I wouldn't want to see him buy something and then get it here and then find out he's got to sink another $30,000 into it to ensure code compliance with Massachusetts regulations. So um, he was thankful that I gave him that idea and, and I think that we can look forward to seeing that uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, again, met with the Rotary Club member of, of the Taste of Metro North. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a repeat last bullet there. Um, community health program. Um, I reviewed <coughs> public health nurses reports. Um, I didn't see any issues. Um, we conducted a nurse nursing supply inventory list. Um, we developed a template and the flyer in case through Darlene did it. Uh, in case that we have another influenza clinic, we drafted a new flyer, a more friendly flyer. A um, couple of these other agencies I contacted just to introduce myself to them because they're line items in the Board of Health budget. Um, tobacco control, I, 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 uh, I think that speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. um, is that Maureen's sister? Maureen Busby. Maureen. Did I spell it right? Yeah. Did I spell Her name's Maureen. Maureen. No, it's, it's Maureen. Maureen. I, I'm sorry. It's, all right. <laughs> okay. it's like Suzanne. It's, uh, I, it's mean, nice so, I mean so many people. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know so many people. Uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, emergency preparedness, we'll just go right to that. Uh, so wait, did sorry. Michelle say anything other than about the medical recreational marijuana? Did she say anything other than it was a good question to you? Any guidance on... Are you want my thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, medical marijuana is going to, it's regulated by the state. The local Board of Health has no jurisdictional authority in this matter, nor do they have any code compliance enforcement in it. Uh, medical marijuana is, is um, obviously uh, run by the State Public Health Department. Mm. They bring in their own specialized inspectors to do the inspections. Mm. So there's no uh, stress on the local level with respect to the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the right, under my opinion, we yeah. don't have the right to develop any regulations with respect to that. Mm. For medical. This is medical. For medical. medical. For medical. Um, the only concern I had originally with medical within my community was the fact of the edibles. Yeah. Um, however, doing some research, it was found out that medical marijuana edibles are not considered food for human consumption. They're considered pharmaceutical products. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they're exempt from that particular statute of the law. Um, that being said, we went through this whole process in North Reading as well. Um, recreational. 
Um, my feeling on that is, is, again, this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. not speaking for the town of Reading, just because I'm, um, you know, there's going to be a cannabis commission that's <clears> going to be appointed for this. Mm -hmm. um, what we did in our community is we it went through a town meeting and then a town vote, similar to, I think, what we might be doing here. Mm -hmm. yes. um, you guys did it in reverse of the way that we're doing it here. Exactly. Because your election is after the town meeting, right. so they did yeah. town meeting an overwhelming rejection yes. of commercial establishments by a vote of 80 to 20. Yes. And then it's Very going long. to... Now it will go to a vote of the voters. Vote of the voters. Yeah. Which it will... Which it will, town? North Carolina. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so that being said, this recreational will be permitted by the state, as we all know, by the treasurer's office. The position that the Board of Health has taken in my community is one of... What position? Yes. Um, you said that you've never been asked, and we're right. asking if you would like the Board of Health here to take a position on whether or not recreational commercial establishments are in the best interest of you know, the health of, of, the, health of mm -hmm. the community. And with and particular attention, obviously, because of the, uh, of the, of the way that you guys have been proceeding around the protection mm -hmm. of youth. And so what, so you heard that question? Yes. And was that the same type of question that you were asked? Yes. And you said no. Well, we, we, gave, or, or, we, or, we gave our brief statement to uh -huh. how we felt. Can and, you share and, that with us or send it to us? I would send it to you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I, I would. Why would you be unwilling to share that right now? I don't have the language in front of me. Okay, but was it essentially in line with what town meeting decided? He, yes, it, more along the lines of what the Board of Health's position is with respect to being on the community impact team. Mm. You know, we've received a grant from the federal government. Right. And part of, I've actually okay. sat in on your right. meetings. Okay, so that being said, the Board of Health could not support that. And, and no, again, could not support again, recreational I, I, shops. Is that what you're I saying? can't speak for my board of health. I can, yeah. I can only tell you right, the statement right. that came. Right. Out. So mm -hmm. I, I can't. I can't. Of be course. Out of speak for my board. Yeah, I would never ask. You. Um, but that was the statement that we gave. Mm -hmm. And that was not in support of a recreational commercial uh, exactly. distribution system. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> Um, okay. Well, Thanks for waiting into those. Words. Oh no, no worries, no worries. Uh, here to help you guys. That's okay. Uh, I'm ready. Oh, um, I'm sorry. On the public health nurse report, um, please tell me I I misread this. Was there a food poisoning in there? Um, was it? Did I miss that? Mr. Chair. I, I need to excuse myself sure. because I have Finn Com at 7.30. Sure. But possibly, at, and this report is excellent, okay. and because I'm a liaison, I need to transmit it. Sure. Is it okay with everybody here if I just get together with Bob to what I miss, he can review it? Yeah, I don't know. Sure. You guys all right with that? Absolutely. John, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Is there any, <coughs> excuse me, update on hiring a permanent health? Uh, uh, He's asking I, I believe that we Jean, I Jean, Je, as I came in the door, Jean oh, just oh. mentioned something. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, no. Zero nine three two. Oh, thank you. Oh, the last one. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. oh, they're like, oh, they are um, yeah, they're like pineapple. It's it's interesting. Oh, I thought it was mint. They're actually it's, uh, edible. It's pina colada. They're actually edible. They're brought back from Colorado. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, 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 In a couple oh, of hours. Get out of here. Oh, hey, crap. On video. I get drug tested. Yeah. I get no, drug tested. Come on. Either. Oh, God. Are you guys still video? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, with respect to that, yeah. I, I did have a conversation, and it was my recommendation to the public health nurse that she contact the Boston Inspectional Services Division on that because it was something that occurred, I think, in a restaurant in Boston. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, but then oh. the person I think lives Fine. here. Okay, and that would be the normal and standard protocol nice. is to notify that okay. health mm -hmm. department and let them follow up with that particular restaurant. Okay, okay. tell the public health nurse to say. Not in Reading. 
Yeah. 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 Move on to emergency preparedness. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I attended for uh, a 3B coalition meeting on behalf of, of Reading. Uh, I attended a uh, awareness meeting in Topsfield. Um, I also had conversations with Mark Malone, who is the HMCC project manager for our coalition. Mm -hmm. um, they were had extra nursing supplies, um, so I had the public health nurse try to draft something up of what we may or may not need. Oh, cool. um, I had heard back right. from him actually, I think it was yesterday, um, and I gave him uh, Mrs. Pierce's contact information, so we should be getting some uh, supplies. Free stuff. Great. Mm -hmm. Free stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's always good to get free stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, Environmental health, uh, 250 Main, I mean 650 Main Street was a dumpster issue. Mm -hmm. um, I reviewed the annual FY17 uh, Middlesex Control mm -hmm. Report. Um, I also contacted Dave Henley. Uh, I know Dave obviously from for many years, and, and one of the things that we did in my community was we uh, through the Middlesex Control, uh, we provided a, a community educational uh, program for the residents where mm -hmm. people could come in and listen to. Um, you know, uh, an education seminar on West Nile virus, Chablis, Zika, and Lyme disease, what residents can do in their home to take precautionary measures. Um, it actually was very well in our community. It, it got a lot of people. So mm -hmm. one of the things I'm trying to do while I'm here is trying to set that up for the town of Reading. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, reviewed an, an asbestos, asbestos abatement review, which is pretty standard. It's just an uh, DEP ANF yeah, zero one can't. form that comes in. I have to I have to no. recuse myself from right. that. Was that yours? I'm with the Mass DEP, oh, so okay. I can't. All right. I, I can't. Well, it's, I mean, as you go ahead and speak. As you know, it's, it's just a review that comes in that shows that someone properly had asbestos removed and it was properly transported to a DEP incinerator site. As mm -hmm. you know, um, <clears throat> reviewed a Mass DEP release notification form. Um, talked with a constituent about filling in an in-ground pool. Um, and that was really no issue. Um, community standards division housing. I reviewed the 166 Pearl Street file, which I think the board is familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I conducted a comprehensive inspection at 413 Gazebo Circle per the uh, request of a resident. Um, Everything okay? Well, they were renting out the unit, so mm -hmm. they wanted to have a. Uh, pre-inspection oh, so I see. show that there was no code violation so yeah. that when the occupant moves in they show them that there wasn't any code violations. Oh. Oh, I it was see. pretty similar to a program that I developed in Stoneham where property owners um, could request an inspection yeah. and you know it would protect them against malicious destruction but it would also protect the tenant against moving into substandard conditions. Yeah. Wow. So it was a very good program Benefits. and actually John your, your food inspector has taken over that program on me now. Who pays for that? Um, well, the property owner would pay, so okay. it was a fifty dollar inspection fee. Wow, that's it. Um, yeah, it's cheap, but again, it's twofold. Again, like I said, it protects. Yeah, it's yeah, great. It protects both parties. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, give you an example. If if a tenant moved in and accidentally broke a window and refused to get it fixed, the, the property owner now has, you know, the means to go to civil court and say, look, I had an inspection report. It wasn't broken at the time. Yeah. I might have done it accidentally. Then the judge or the clerk magistrate would find in favor of the property. Wow, that's a great service. So it's a good, it's a good program. Yeah. I like your forward-thinking uh, approach to these problems. Yeah. So when will be coming? When will you be coming to Reading? Full time. Uh, I, Full I time. <laughs> I don't want to say anything on the record. Moving <laughs> 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 we'll right along. Uh, okay. Investigated a complaint at Twenty Three Spring Street for unsanitary conditions. Um, that's I got to do a follow-up with that. Um, I issued them an order notice to correct, okay. uh, so that gave them 14 days to correct the violations. Uh, investigated a complaint on 6 Robert Road for illegal dumping of leaves. Unfortunately, the leaves didn't have any names or addresses on it, so I couldn't determine mm -hmm. who DNA they were. Were they huh? DNA fingerprinting? Uh, were they dumped on the property or on the street? It's just where? a vacant lot that, that oh, look. Okay. You know, oh. the likelihood is the abutting property owners mm -hmm. probably. Just out mm -hmm. there. Um, but again, I, I can't <laughs> distinguish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Review of a dumpster complaint by the uh, Reading uh, Police Department. Um, I was been working back and forth with uh, Police Officer Kevin Brown on this matter. Uh -huh. um, this is an issue again. I think mentioned earlier uh, about disposal companies coming in early mm -hmm. and oh, picking yeah. up. Um, you know, the question became is should we cite 
in particular, it was, it was Starbucks, um, should we be citing Starbucks? And I said, well, no, why would you do that? They're, they're not there at 4.30 in the morning. Why would they be penalized for something that they didn't do? Right. It's a disposal company. Um, <coughs> you know, if the board likes, I, I, I could take a look at what you have for regulations and, and make some suggestions or recommendations moving forward for possibly the next agent that comes in. Um, we've developed regulations when I was in Newburyport that had a little bit of teeth to it um, to hold solid waste companies responsible for a pickup, and it works well. Um, we I believe in this town, because I had experience with my own business, they hold the business owner responsible. They, they shouldn't do that. Is it personally? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I wasn't there at 5.30 right. in the morning. It's illegal. But they were, <clears throat> they, they didn't, they warned me, but I was yeah. under the impression that, that you were I was liable. So who, who warned you? Um, somebody in the town. Somebody in the town. Somebody who shall remain nameless. Yes, uh, but uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a helpful way. You can see how quickly you get regulations well, and, and again, here, but, as you know, well, again, as you know. I don't want to, I, I hear what you're saying, we don't want to, it's a nuisance. To well, have. it's a nuisance condition that presents itself. Yeah. And, and, and under Chapter 111, Section, you know, one twenty-two. No, I think it's twenty-three. Actually. Twenty-three. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, as the board, can make reasonable rules right. and regulations. Mm -hmm. And under that same section, one twenty-seven A, it does state that the board of health has to permit people who transport solid waste right. in and out of the community. And again, with that, you can make reasonable regulations to hold them accountable mm -hmm. for it. And I tell you, the reason why we did it in Newberry Report is we had a dumpster company dump liquid effluent out of the back of the truck, which smelled the center of town for almost two hours oh, on a Saturday. Wow. They would like dripping it as they went? Yeah, and yeah, it, was, it wow. was horrible. And again, you're not trying to not be business friendly. Mm -hmm. You are, mm -hmm. but at the same time, again, your mission statement is to protect the general oh, we, we the know. community. And that's one <laughs> way that you, you really have to do that. Um, okay. What title is that? Uh, what title of the laws? I, I, think, I believe it was 127A. Um, but I get, if I'm if I'm off on that, I can get it for you. Yeah. Um, so moving forward, swimming mm -hmm. pools. Um, I drafted a new swimming pool application through Darlene for you guys. Um, it's more of a um, one-page application with about 30 pages of information from the community sanitation department on how pools should properly operate and how they should protect themselves with you know fecal contamination and things of that nature. So. It's a more of an educational packet for the permit holders. Mm -hmm. um, what do we have now? Um, I, I think it's just a one page, right? Oh. It's, a, okay. it's in a draft form, so we're, we're working okay. on that. Okay. Um, I'm going to be meeting next week with uh, Deborah Peter. I say that, Deborah Peters? I think it was Deborah Peters, yeah. Um, regarding a lifeguard issue, uh, they want to not have lifeguards. Um, so I Where? Where? Um, Briarwood. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Off, off of Washington Street. Briarwood. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Hasn't this issue come up before? Yeah. Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, again, I, I think under the, your regulations, I'm, I'm, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's, there's anything in there that mandates it. Right. Um, however, under the state sanitary code, these places have the option to not have lifeguards so long as they have the appropriate signage in place. Mm -hmm. One of the compromises I would recommend to the board, that being the case if this is a troubled uh, establishment, is you know during the week when it's not busy, maybe you don't have a lifeguard, but you have the appropriate signage. Maybe during the peak times on a on a Saturday or Sunday, mm -hmm. you make them have a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. That way, you're compromising mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. and you're yeah. not being right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just right. a suggestion. Are there children in Briarwood? Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of children. Yeah, there's on Washington Street. Yeah, it's at the far end, um, towards the Parker. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. way down at the okay. end of the street. All right, I know. Um, I reviewed a constituent request for microblading, which is the same thing as body art. Uh, I emailed uh, her the body out regulations um, and advised her to take a look at it, make sure that the physical plant facility is set up in such a way that meets code compliance, and you know take a re review of the regulations and then come back to me 
to ensure that you still want to continue with that. Is most, this a new establishment? Uh, it, was a, it was one, yeah, I think she was looking to come hey, into she, town. Oh, she, she wanted to move into town? I believe so. Was it, was it microblading. Microblading. That's painful. And, uh, what is microblading? It's just basically a very small incision. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you're, you're still going to cut the skin, so you still have to follow. Mm -hmm. What do you do is when it you cut? It's what? like a color. You, you, color? You, you slice it a little bit, and then you, I believe, you, you like it's like if someone got burnt. And they have the eyebrows. Oh, is so. there a licensing for this sort of thing? Well, it would fall under your body out regulations. Like, the, yeah, the, right. does the person have to be licensed to do yes, this? Yes, they would have to be certified. And they'd have, to, uh, they'd have to show demonstration that they're certified in, in bloodborne pathogen mm -hmm. certification. Oh, right, uh, right. Pro, uh, precautionary, um, what is it? Um, I think it's precautionary, so I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank. Right. Uh, but yes, they would have to be certified in a few different things that yeah. are outlined in your regulations. Okay. And there are, there are chemicals involved in this process? Well, there's dyes. Ink. No, no major chemicals. Right. It's just more of a small incision and then, you know, Ink. dyes. So they would have to have disposable products and stuff like that. Okay. So they're not reusing hmm. them. Have an autoclave and, and things like that. Right. Um, okay. Um, so Title V uh, stuff that we did, um, conducted an inspection of an abandoned system on 48 slash uh, 50 Franklin Street, mm -hmm. uh, reviewed a well permit application on Haverhill Street for irrigation well, mm -hmm. um, did that well inspection on Haverhill Street, um, again abandoned septic system sign off for 4850 uh, Franklin Street, reviewed another well application on 23 Cape Cod Street, that was another irrigation well. Mm -hmm. Um, administration um, submitted a draft annual report for FY 16-17 and again just to reiterate that was a draft report that was sent to you um, through Darlene there were some edits I believe that it wasn't the final draft that was going to the town manager's office so I think I might have inadvertently sent that to you without it not being the final draft so I apologize for that um, reviewed the Board of Health budget um, had meetings with the assistant town manager uh, on storm preparedness related issues, um, received emails from the town manager regarding um, a gentleman that was here tonight, mm -hmm. uh, and Meadowbrook Country Club, um, met with Board of Health Chairman Ms. Koskin, um, reviewed or uh, gave comments to the Community Development Department for a planning letter for Zero Harrow Ave, um, updated the Reading Board of Health on public advisory uh, storm management, that's on the website as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Uh, met with Maureen in the office there regarding staff time, uh, conversations with Kevin Brown regarding mm -hmm. the dumpster issues, um, and I met with Julie Mercer, if I'm saying that right, uh, regarding zoning regulations pertaining to the dumpster issue that we had. Um, <coughs> the animal Control reviewed an application for 174 Salem Street for, was that chickens? Mm -hmm. yeah, it was chickens. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. thank you. Wow, that was, that was a lot of work in, uh, what, Ooh. you've been here a month and a half now? Yeah. This is just a month. A month? Yeah, about a month and a half. And a half. <coughs> that's nothing. Oh. Hey, that's what do you sleep? sleep? No, but what do you, you're only like 10 hours a week? Yeah. <laughs> he drives so very sweet. fast. Wow. Well, thank, thank you. We really, 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 really appreciate you helping yeah, us out. Excellent. Yeah, no, and, no, and no And worries. I missed, you asked John about us getting a, a new, getting a, a replacement. A permanent. Uh, a permanent. A permanent. Well, yes. Right. Steve's yeah. replacement. If we decide we want to replace one. Uh, yes, <laughs> actually. I don't know. That's yeah. a fair question. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right. I mean, gee. But uh, whatever, yes, as I was walking in the door tonight, Gene said, we're going to have some uh, interviews. We were trying to uh, figure out when I would be here. She's awesome. going to be out on med leave, I think, for a week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might, might be the end of April that we have the interviews. So we have some applicants. Yes, there's two or three applicants I think she's very happy with. And do we know why Steve, was there a, uh, a, a like exit interview with Steve, why he left? They, they did, that's why he wasn't at one of our meetings, because of his exit interview, I think. Oh, right, yeah, yes. Uh, and do we know why? I mean, because <clears throat> he, he wasn't here that long. Right. Well, and that's what we can discuss in the ten keep a tenure right uh, at one at our meeting. I didn't have I didn't think we'd have time for it tonight. Yeah, yeah. no, it's been it was a big you did a good job. Yeah, 
leading us through. Yes, excellent. A very difficult. So, trial by fire, yeah, John. That's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Jumped right I in. I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I, just, I stepped down when I did. I mean, I'm not sorry, but. <laughs> you are not sorry. Uh, <laughs> now, we do. Can we get copies of that, uh, darling? Yes, I'm when, we, when we get, because you guys. If you could review that, I will, Absolutely. I will work oh, on yes, that yes, tonight. Yes. Yeah. I will work now, Darlene. I'll have to send it to you because I can't send information to these guys. Correct. So I'll send right. it through you. Well, she's going to make copies right now. Well, you're going to no, insert, I mean, the, my, you'll my, insert my, the uh, certification. My citations. citations. Right. Right. Oh. Right. And, so and don't copy it off yet. He's going to. So like in the scientific no, this, no, this, this is Nancy. This is this oh, that's Nancy. Nancy. This is Nancy's. Oh, yes, yes, okay, thank you. Okay. Nancy, you should uh, huh? absolutely read Nancy's throw in. Right. Yeah, that was really yeah. interesting. Yeah, very well, well written. written. Yeah. It's a complicated, very complicated subject. It is. Um, but we'll we'll read through Nancy's stuff. We'll read through your thing with yeah. the citations. We'll get your way in as well. Um, <coughs> and... Uh, and then we'll meet next week. Uh, Tuesday, is that? Uh, we'll work uh, I hope, yeah, I got it. Let me check when I get back tonight. I'll check, okay. too. I'm pretty sure I can do um, it. Okay. Were that I better on my Google app phone, but I'm getting there. I mean, really? you could always do it Thursday, I, I mean, I, uh, without me. Thursday. He'll be oh, going. he's hunting. I'm, no, I'm hunting Wednesday. Oh, uh, what are you hunting, birds? Are you now hunting a regular hunter now? No, what are you hunting? John Halsey's Rotary uh, had an auction, and you've been and on one a of my trip. one of my buddies. Uh, this said, is is a hunter from Indiana. Right, said, right. Well, this is the same one we were talking yes. about. Yes. What, what, oh, okay, what are you okay. hunting? Pheasant. All right. They had a I love pheasant. Gee, we should maybe we should uh, close yeah, the yeah, meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let these guys leave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Well, good luck <clears throat> on your hunting. Thank you. Um, and that is on. Wednesday? That's Wednesday. It was going to be the snowstorm day, but it that's right. Oh, okay. so you could okay. do Thursday okay. if you had, but without me. Uh, I, Thursday. It looks like Thursday, I could do Thursday. Okay, All right. so if Tuesday doesn't work, you guys can do Thursday. Okay. Oh, yeah. I can phone in from. Nashville. Well, you, that, you can. We can do that. <gasps> okay. If, if. I might be with my friend, Keith Urban, though that's my plan. Is to <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So should should we? Yeah, I think we can close. get it done. We can, these guys get out of here. I mean, I think we can get that meeting done and, and get the select yep. some opinion. If yes, right. Okay. And any more so, discussion or any public any comments? No. no we're good. Thanks. Make a motion to. Oh, actually, we don't need to mo no, make a motion. Just you just close. close. You just close. We don't need a motion to close. No, no we don't. You just oh, say. Okay. Close. Close the meeting. Okay. All right. So close. Oh boy. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.